Hello and welcome to Jeff Tech. <laughs> it's, it's so stupid. I found this very interesting looking keyboard on Amazon. When I looked up reviews uh, on YouTube, there were actually zero. So I was wondering if this was a brand new product. There was one review of a model that looked very slightly different and I couldn't tell. It probably used a lot of the same parts, but um, so this is it right here. This is a Mophie, Mofi, Mo. Mofi. It's a it's a rechargeable Bluetooth keyboard. It can also work in wired mode. It's supposed to work with uh, Windows, Mac, PC, iOS, Android, all that jazz. Um, I mean, I'm guessing it could probably work on like a PlayStation and stuff like that too. Most keyboards, it's pretty universal. Anyway, let me go ahead and crack this bad Larry open. A little refreshment. Wumpa Fruit G Fuel, by the way, that's really good. Not sponsored, obviously. Followers, I've got like uh, 12 friends in a moth following me, so. This is overkill, uh, but this is what I'm gonna be using to open the Mopey. You are greeted by some foam. Oh, oh, okay. So once you get inside, the packaging is actually a little more premium. Look at that, actually. That's really nice. Like the matte on gloss. This is really fancy. The only other keyboard I've ever had that came in a packaging like this was um, a Lofri Four Seasons, which is like a $150 keyboard. So I'm a little impressing as when I got this, I did get this at a price drop. Uh, I got it for like 45 bucks, I think. Um, when I added it to my wish list, it was like over 80, so. Don't be surprised if this costs a little bit more. Slide it out. What is this? Oh, I guess they're calling the model the Phoenix. That's the first time it's coming up. It was, I don't believe it said that anywhere on the Amazon ad, so that's a little odd. I don't know, I won't, I won't think too much about it. So let's change angles here for a second because this looks like they want it to be uh, dramatic. So I'll give them what they want. Okay, so this is my first look at the um, Mophie Phoenix, I guess they're calling it. So, give it a lift. Wow. Wow, they are really actually going all in on the, the whole premium keyboard. Wow. First impressions are pretty dang good. Okay. I mean, definitely, it's a, it's a unique feeling, I'll give it that. The keys do feel a little plasticky cheap, but there's this nice kind of matte coat on them too. So I'm really conflicted as to how I'm supposed to feel about this thing. But, okay, so we're taking it out of the box. Um, it's got a really slick design, man. Like, that's unlike anything I've ever seen on a keyboard, to be honest. And for the price point, look at that. That's metal. This is metal. This is like, is this aluminum? I don't know what this is, but I'm I'm shocked, to be honest. I was expecting an all plastic build, but this is, this is very cold and very hard. This up here, this is all plastic. So, but for some reason, man, this back plate, so it gives it, it gives it a, a good weight. It's heavy. Well, I'm gonna kind of put this right here for now. Belts are right there. And let's look at the treasures. What in God's name, how silly is that? Oh, are these not removable at all? I guess I wouldn't be surprised, huh? Um, they give you the strangest little brush. Look at that scary hand. Look at that scary hand. And here it's got a hole through it. Like, am I supposed to... What is this supposed to do? It does, it does not reach the bottom. <laughs> the cable looks pretty nice. Oh, uh, come on, man. Micro B. Pretty much everything I own is USB-C now. So when something wanders into my life and still has micro B, I'm like, I'm like, come on. I guess I've heard that it's actually fairly expensive to implement USB-C. Uh, so that could be a reason why, uh, especially if they want to keep the price point down. Um, I've heard that whoever licenses out the USB uh, protocol to people for them to be able to use it, 
they're charging a lot right now for USB-C, so if you're wondering why some of these, these kind of cheaper budget electronics aren't quite on USB-C yet, uh, that could be a reason. So if you run the USB company, which is a weird thing, stop it and just let people implement USB-C. It will be good for the planet. It will be good for the consumer. Uh, overall, it's, it will just be a good thing. Let's take a closer look at the keyboard. Hey, there's a treasure I forgot about. And yes, I'm saying treasure because I watch Dank Pods. What is, oh, uh, really? Put that off to the side. There's something else in here though. Why? Who uses a microfiber cloth in there? There's no glass on this. Who uses a microfiber cloth on a keyboard? On a matte keyboard. Oh yes, it's very clean. It's very clean the keyboard, and the, we are doing it the cleaning. Let's see how it works. These are gonna be for, you know, whatever system you are utilizing the keyboard on. You can switch modes. I'm guessing that there's just a function, yeah, there's a function key over here. Uh, one design thing that I noticed now, this is a gorgeous design, right? I've been complimenting it nonstop. It's got these hard edges. Oh, am I missing a little paint here? One thing I'm noticing about the design Check this out. I don't remember it looking like this in the ad, but I could be wrong. What is happening here? Why? That's gonna bother me. Why is the end key black, but the left arrow key is white? I, I'm pretty sure in the ad, the enter key was black and all the arrow keys were black and this was white still. Taking a closer look at some of the keys up here. You got some function keys, it'll open your default browser, uh, search, some media keys, that's always good. Uh, I do wish there were some dedicated media keys, but I'll take what I can get. Okay, so to test this thing, I'm gonna be testing it on a Windows laptop. A little Dell Inspiron thing, I don't know. A little dirty. Oh, it's clean now. So clean, thanks. Thanks, little weird brush. Okay, so first things first, I want to test the Bluetooth. Man, that design thing is, it's really I'm, weird, man. Uh, anyway, looks like they've got, uh, let's see, power on the back. Yeah, so there's power right here. Uh, there's your uh, micro B port. Let's go ahead and flip this bad Larry to on. Let's see if they gave us any battery with this thing because I have not charged it at all. Okay, no, okay, we got some battery here. So let's go into our Bluetooth menu. Go to Bluetooth, add a device. Okay, I see it, it's right here. Okay, it says it's connecting. Device is ready to go. So let's get trusty notepad open. Oh, okay, well the, the hexagon keycaps are already just a little, just a little strange. Uh, okay, it's gonna take a little getting used to. It's gonna take a little bit of getting used to, but honestly, all in all, not too bad. Uh, what's gonna take getting used to is the ugh, the white left arrow key. That's so freaking weird, man. Let's take a look at how the media keys work. Okay, so, got some music here. Let me just hit play. Just did a bad thing. So clearly, this is a keyboard that's meant for aesthetics, right? This is a keyboard that's 110% about the look. Uh, you put it out on your desk and people walk by and they go, wow. And that's cool. Like, there's something to be said for that. Uh, I absolutely, I bought it for the aesthetic. I love the look. Um, or I love the look. I'm going to double check the ad. Oh, and I love... Another thing I didn't mention was this very alarming escape key. Uh, it's very, ah, stop. I don't know how typists are gonna feel about this. Um, another thing, another quirk that is mentioned in some of the reviews is the shift key is pushed over the design compromise. I've seen this before actually on the low free Four Seasons keyboard. Uh, this was over here, but what that did was it took the up arrow and put it over here, which I found way more annoying than moving the shift key over here. It's actually why I don't use the low free four seasons is because of 
the arrow key being over the right arrow key, like the up arrow being over the right arrow key makes no sense. I can't use that keyboard because when I'm like just in go mode at work, I have to hit like the up if I'm in like a terminal and I'm, I'm trying to... So yeah, uh, final thoughts. Uh, this is not an enthusiast keyboard. Uh, this is not a mechanical keyboard. This is a purely a membrane keyboard. It, they're a little jelly, but like you kind of want that from something that looks like jelly honeycombs. Like the, if that makes any sense, I kind of don't mind that membrane feel for this particular product because it looks like it's gonna feel a little jelly, if that makes any sense. Uh, as far as like lift on the key, like when you hit the key and it, it kind of, the, the press back is very light. And I gotta say, it's pretty quiet. It's actually very quiet. Is that black end key and the white left arrow key? It looks really bad. It looks really, really bad. And when you're talking about an when you're talking about an all white surface, uh, what 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 parts? I mean, obviously you see the whole thing first. You notice that red button, and then your eyes will drift over here and say, "What's going on over here?" It connected very quickly. Uh, I'm not noticing a lot of lag, right? Uh, if you're gaming, don't use a keyboard like this, it's too freaking weird. This is like for someone like working from home that wants like the cutest possible desk setup and everything. Again, uh, not for typing enthusiasts, not for gamers. Uh, looks amazing, works great. Um, don't know how long the battery lasts. Uh, it doesn't really say. It says it's got a 170 milliamp battery. Uh, that seems really, really small to me. Um, but I don't know. I don't know how that translates in keyboards. Yeah, so I I give the uh, Mophie Phoenix Bluetooth uh, 7 out of 10, would be an 8 out of 10 if it wasn't for this uh, business over here. Toodles!